Okay, we've covered a lot. One of the last things I want to talk about is sun exposure. And this is not a full podcast about sun exposure, skin cancer risk, skin damage, ultraviolet light. I've done previous podcasts on that. I can go back down the rabbit hole. Sunscreen, yes, is mostly bullshit. It's full of garbage, octocrylene, avobenzone, homogentisate, all kinds of garbage things in sunscreen that are excreted in your poop and your pee and cause cancer. Sunscreen is bullshit. If you're going to use a sunscreen, use something that's animal-based with animal fats and zinc. We're developing something. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be a bit because sunscreens are hard to build, but we are building a good sunscreen for you guys in the future. But sun exposure is valuable. And there is some evidence, though the research is not completely clear on this, there's some good evidence that sun exposure is associated with positive increases in the gonadal axis. So skin exposure to UVB light increase induces a skin brain gonad axis and sexual behavior. This is from Cell Reports. I'm not sure you get any more uh, reputable than a cell journal. The graphical abstract here says that perhaps this is involved with P53 gene activity, and they are looking at um, animal models, but they are saying that there is good evidence that solar exposure in humans enhances romantic passion and positively correlates with male testosterone levels. So I would say if you are not getting in the sun, uh, do that if you want more testosterone or if you want improved hormones as a man or a woman. There's probably a good reason that no one takes a honeymoon, and I can't say that. Very few people take a honeymoon to Arctic, Iceland, or very northern places. People go on honeymoons to warm places with lots of sun, and who knows, maybe you get in the sun and you feel a little more uh, libidinous, a little more horny, and it's a great thing on your honeymoon or any time that you want to have sex with your romantic partner because this is the place to do it. I'm This is the place to do it. I mean, I'm sitting at the ninth latitude in Costa Rica, and I can tell you it's great here. There's a lot of sun. And I think people are quite um, healthy here from at least a sun perspective. Uh, and I do put myself in the sun quite a bit. If you've any, seen any of my stories or any of my social media, you know that I'm quite tan. People will sometimes say, aren't you worried about skin cancer? To which I say, no, not at all, because I don't have much linoleic acid in my cell membranes at all. But what I do benefit from is a healthy libido because of that sun exposure for a variety of reasons. I cannot find any articles to substantiate the claim that sun on the testicles or tanning naked is particularly beneficial, but it feels good. I do it from time to time. One of the benefits of owning my own house in Costa Rica is that I can tan naked on my porch. Who knows if it's beneficial or not, but I'm covering that base just in case. One more thing that I will mention here is the uh, this study from the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, and it shows the variation in levels of serum inhibin A, which is a feedback loop, remember, from the uh, Sertoli cells, testosterone, estradiol, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, and sex hormone binding globulin in monthly samples from healthy men during a 17 month period, possible effects of the season. Uh, I will just tell you in brief that the seasonal variation does appear to be real, at least in this study. And this is a Norwegian population who may see more variation in the days uh, between the winter and the summer. But I think that most of us will at least subjectively agree that being in warm climates, being tan, getting in the sun does improve libido as long as you don't overdo it and get tanned and then get really tired because you're uh, burned. Uh, 